Hello, and welcome friends. We've spent $2,500 on a vintage sports card collection that includes baseball, hockey, football, and basketball with a ton of cool rookies. Let's get into the action. First up, we've got Don Sutton, 1968 Tops. And a lot of these aren't in gradable condition, but they are pretty cool. So we're just going to kind of go relatively quickly as we take a look. There's a bunch of different patch cards in here. Here's a Randy Johnson patch card, still taped up from whoever sent it. Apparently they put like five or six different things of tape on there. Uh, not a bad looking card. Then we've got the Gary Carter patch card, pretty cool. This one's numbered to 250. Then we have a 1959 Fleer Ted Williams outfielder card. And this is actually in pretty good condition other than the wax stain on the back. And this might have been a candidate for grading, but the, the weird thing about this is that these cards are really not worth much of anything. I mean, you can get a PSA 9 of this, a 1959 Fleer Ted Williams in a PSA 9, and it goes for like 80 bucks. So to me, that's a little bit crazy. There's a bunch of these patch cards. Uh, this is an interesting one here. We've got Roger Clemens and Nolan Ryan. Kind of plain patches, but nonetheless, to get two game-used patches from awesome pitchers like this, never a bad thing. Now, these patch cards are kind of a dime a dozen in a sense that you can get them for around $15 or $20 unless there's some sort of exclusivity to it. Obviously, having two, uh, well, one Hall of Fame and one wannabe in the Hall of Fame pitcher it, you know, it still makes it interesting, and it still bumps the value up a little bit. What do you guys think about Roger Clemens this year? Do you think he's going to make it into the Hall of Fame? Here's a pretty sweet patch. This is Nolan Ryan, Roger Clemens, and Randy Johnson, all three together on the same patch. Not bad. 1999 Hall of Fame Nolan Ryan patch from Topps Tribute. I believe there's a few of these. They've even included a hair for us in there. That's a pet peeve I have. I know that scanners pick them up and you, it's really difficult to get rid of them in every capacity. But man, hair, I have a cat, so he's always trying to funk the world out with all the hair. I mean, just Hair on cards just tilts me, man. What in the living hell? What in the living hair? This is a Nolan Ryan Significant Swatches Authentic Game Used Patch. This is good looking. SP Legendary Cuts, got the $25 price tag on it. Who knows what it is these days? Probably between 15 and 20 bucks. There's a 1968 Topps Brook Robinson, Brooks Robinson rather. Again, there's a bunch of these. There's a lot of vintage cards in this collection. Uh, some of them a little bit on the higher end, some of them not. A lot of the, you know, the problem with this collection was condition. There were a lot of different star names, but the condition is such that it, it kind of makes them more a dime a dozen uh, for a lot of them. But there's, there's Lou Brock, not bad. That's a 67, I believe. Yeah, 1967. There's a 1970 Carl Yastrzemski. It's not a bad looking card. Cash and K Line, another 1967. The Bengal Belters. I'll tell you what, man, you go around belting bangles these days and you're going to get in a lot of trouble, man. You can't be treating cats like that. Jeez. You leave those cougars alone. There's a Willie Stargell, 1970. What, what's this? What's this? What's he doing with the bat? How's he? I mean, it seems like if you're going to hold the bat like that, you would hold it closer to the end of the shaft. You know what I mean? And he, he's sort of holding it to the middle of the shaft. And what's that next to him? Like a giant spider leg or something? Oh, it's weird. Somebody went to Smokies. Looks like they bought this Harold Baines rookie for $4.50. Not bad, not bad. Which is kind of weird because this one says 1981 from the same place, Smokies. $8 for the Tim Raines rookie in the crazy... I mean, man, cases used to be insane back in the day. They would literally put a truck together to take care of these things. Like, built, like, tanks, man. And this is weird to me simply because one says 89, one says 81. This is obviously a 1981 card as well. So was this one sold in 81 and this was sold in 89? But Smokies was still rolling with the same price tags? Same check mark. Either way, they both check out. Willie McCovey and Leon Wagner, friendly foes. Not a bad looking card. Then we have some of these awkward graded cards from just whack-ass companies. I mean, these are the types of fly-by-night companies where they're just sitting in their basement eating nacho cheese sauce in their underwear. Ain't even got no chips, man. They just just straight up nacho cheese sauce by the gobs. Just that's a that's a seven right there. This one looked like a ten to me. Well, I tell you what, these look like a couple. Whoosh, whoosh, throw them out the window. 
So yeah, this is why GMA sucks, guys. Don't uh, don't use these grading companies, you know? They're generally trash. Just uh, wait for a good grading company. I mean, other than PSA, I mean, BGS has got their scandals with all their cases right now. CSG, I hope that one works out. I'll tell you that. Because we need more options in this industry. This is a really cool one here, guys. This is a tools of the trade, absolute. I've always liked the absolute product. Uh, 2004, Ricky Henderson, when he was on the San Diego Padres, which is kind of weird. And this is numbered 71 out of 100. So I would assume that this is a little bit better than just like a $10 patch. It's probably like a $20 to $25 patch. Not sure. Haven't checked it out. But being out of 100 and then having a Ricky Henderson pant, jersey, and bat piece is pretty cool. The only thing that it didn't provide you was like a little graft of skin. You know what I mean? If we could just maybe skin his leg a little bit and some fans could really get And there's only 100 of them. It's not like we need the whole leg or the knee or anything like that. You know, next time you get cut or scraped, just put it in a baggie and send it in, man. What's that going to bring us to? Ballpark Classics. Not a bad one here. Nolan Ryan, authentic game-worn jersey, and ballpark seat. Right, so you can be in the stands and in the game at the same damn time. We got the Ballpark Classics. Where's the hot dog? That's what I want to know. I want to know where the $12 hot dog is. Or is that just the bun? I don't know. BCCG, at least if you're going to get a low-end grading company, this one isn't the worst one to have. And it's a 1987 Donruss. It's got a $15 price tag on the back of it, and it's probably about what it's worth. There's a weird one. LeBron James, Carson Palmer, Darko Milicic, and Byron Leftwich. Leftwich what? Not a sandwich, right? He wouldn't leave a sandwich behind. I wouldn't leave a sandwich behind. This is another one of those fly-by-nights, SPA, spa. If I want a spa, I'll go to a casino, buddy, all right? They're all like $5 a night around here anyway with like a resort fee credit. And right now, they, I mean, this actually uh, Las Vegas is imploding. We're on a three-month pause. And I looked this up, and this was about a $30 card. It's got a $30 price tag on it. Who knows? Uh, it's strange stuff. It's a LeBron James 2002 rookie whatever the hell. I don't know. It's just not my cup of tea for those real awkward ones. This is kind of an interesting card. It's a Bazooka Adventures Alex Rodriguez. It's got a game-worn jersey in it, but it's all foily and refractor-like. And on the back, it's numbered 21... Well, was it numbered on the back? Yeah, there it is. It's numbered 21 out of 25. So I have no idea what the value of this would be. It's unlikely that there's going to be that many of these on eBay. Uh, but that's a pretty cool-looking card. It looks good as a refractor. So we'll see what that's worth. There's a nice Thurman Munson. I believe that's 1973 tops. Actually, this is a 73 OPG. That's one of the things that was interesting about this collection is that there's a bunch of OPG cards in there. So even if they're in kind of rough shape, they're still going to have some additional value in some cases. And Thurman Munson was a badass. If you guys haven't read his book, The Life and Death of a Yankee Captain or whatever, you guys should probably check that out. Yankees, Thurman Munson, bam, another nice Thurman Munson here, 1977 OPG. The OPG backs are like a lot brighter than the uh, the regular tops backs. It's going to bring us to a Rod Carew out of 91 induction ceremony game worn jersey. This would be better if they had like the sweater that he wore at the induction ceremony, authentic induction ceremony sweater piece, something like that. Either way, a nice looking card, you know, and some wings, good design. Then we had a bunch of basic bit shit like a Daryl Strawberry, 84 tops rookie card, Standard Barry Bonds, 87 tops, into the Wade Boggs, 83 Don Russ. This is a cool one. Authentic game worn jersey and pants for Nolan Ryan. And then we've got a jersey and a bat for Rafael Palmero. And then we've got a Juan Gonzalez jersey and bat into an Ivan Rodriguez game-worn jerseys. And that's numbered 15 out of 75. So to have all four of these dudes on the same card and then have actual bat and jersey pieces, like two from each of them, I mean, it seems egregious. It's like going to a buffet, gorging yourself, and then going to another buffet immediately afterwards just to see what sort of desserts they have. There's a nice Tom Seaver All-Star Rookie. Sold one of these a while ago on eBay for about $35. Centering's a bit rough on this, but I can't see any reason why this shouldn't be in the $25 to $30 range for a card. Still looks pretty nice. Bobby Hull, a little bit of that classic hockey. Probably not worth too much, but nonetheless, a decent-looking card. The OPG cards are what the hockey guys want, not the tops versions, in case you guys are getting into that market. And there's, and there's another weird one, BCCG, 
1976 SSPC Jim Hunter Nolan Ryan who knows but it is a cool looking card uh, collectors quarterly you say We've got Brooks Robinson and Frank Robinson, the bird belters. Again, you guys are always beating down on animals, man. Just quit that. This one's not in rough shape. It's pretty difficult to get cards with sharp corners back in the day. And a lot of them end up having softened or rounded corners. So if you find a good card that has decent centering, this one doesn't. But the corners still have some semblance of being a square, sharp corner. Then you're in good shape. But still a little bit rough on this i don't know if you can see yeah it's not gonna do too well but yeah it's a it's a little bit rough another one of those rookie reviews with the weirdo grading carmelo anthony uh, probably not worth very much at all we've got the sammy sosa power tools bat card and that is numbered to 500 not bad 1962 tops babe ruth special an actual babe ruth lou gehrig card uh, not in the worst of shape, but still probably not worth grading. And if it was in slightly better condition, maybe. But with the grading, with the waiting time, with the grading, with the waiting, with the grading, with the wait, with the wait time on the grades, I probably wouldn't be sending many of these low-end cards in that don't have a ton of upside, even if they're profitable. Like if I could send this in for twelve to thirteen dollars, you know, with shipping insurance, whatever, and then peel back thirty or forty bucks, yeah, that's profitable to do on some cards long term. But if you gotta wait till next summer to get the shit back, that's horrible, man. That's not a great idea. So, hey, get back in your... Yo, this card is jumpy. What are you, with the sock hop? Get out of here, malt shake. Frank Robinson, 1967. Not a bad-looking card right there. I always like these 67s. They got the autograph, you know. The only thing I thought was awkward is that it said their position up at the top. So the Orioles looks good. Bam, autograph looks good. Frank Robinson looks good. And then outfield. Huh? Just can we leave that off? I mean, you can see he's in a field. Maybe we'll put that on the back of it or something. Frank Robinson, outfield. Yesterday, I read one of these and I thought that, the, you know, that was actually the guy's name. Imagine not knowing and being like, whoa, Frank Robinson, outfield. Never heard of him. There's a Pete Rose. Looks like OPG. 1977. Ah, all-time home run leaders. Babe Ruth, Hank Aaron, Willie Mays. It's nice to get all three of those guys on a card together and that looks like 1973 tops there's a dave winfield patch card legendary swatches 72 tops hank aaron in action not bad eh, that's a bit off center on the back a really off center reggie jackson 1972 tops but nonetheless still pretty attractive looking and when you guys are buying collections like this, you can find a lot of little nooks and crannies of value. I mean, you might still be able to get five or six bucks for this. Yeah, not on eBay if you're sending it out first class and whatnot, and you got to buy a bubble mailer or an envelope or whatever it is. I mean, it, it's going to cost you more, and it's going to have uh, more of an impact on your bottom line. You also have to consider how long it's going to take you to sell all of these things. Like if you buy a big collection and you have a couple of big pieces that get you money back immediately, that's good. But think about all the medium and, and long-term things that are going to sit there uh, with little to no interest in a lot of cases. Like a lot of these patch cards, even if they sell for 15 or 20 bucks, how long are they going to have to sit there before someone comes along that wants that patch card or collects that type of a patch? So you have to, have to consider how long it's going to take you to get your investment back alongside how much profit you're actually going to potentially make long term uh, before you make these types of purchases. There's a Bob Clemente batting leaders 1968 tops not not bad honestly. There's a Carl Yastrzemski 1970 tops. This is a nice patch card with Johnny Bench and Carlton Fisk. This one's like straight up how you would get it in the mail for sure. It's got the top loader, the penny sleeve, the team bag, bam into a nice 72 Roberto Clemente in action. I gotta tell you, Roberto Clemente's cards are in pretty valuable, even in a lower grade. This doesn't look like one I would send in for grading either. However, that certainly could change. I mean, the centering is decent. The corners are a little bit light. I like these backs. Look for these special cards. Just like a straight up advertisement, you know? He's in action, and now you go buy some shit. Take an action. Make us some more money going to bring us to 1967 RBI leaders with Bob Clemente and Hank Aaron. That's a good looking card other than that crazy 
print line or whatever this nonsense is. And I know that there's a version of the cards that can be Milton Bradley. I'm not an expert on it. There's a 1970 Sporting News Pete Rose All-Star card. Not a bad looking one. Nice looking Nolan Ryan card here. Legendary game jersey. Rod Carew, 1980 OPC. Willie McCovey, 1967 tops. Roger Maris, and I, I tell you what, man. This one looks like it's got a wax stain from every box that they had in the area. Like, if all the wax stains got together and just said, we love Roger Maris, man. Maybe this wax stain drank water after midnight. I'm not sure. Or, wait, what? how does it go? No, spilled, fed, fed him after midnight? Did you feed Roger Maris after midnight? Because it looks like you did. Back into another Lou Brock. We've got a very difficult card to grade. The 1976 George Brett. Followed by a 1970 batting leaders with Rod Carew. 1969 rookie stars with Craig Nettles. 1975 rookie catchers with Gary Carter. I really do prefer the solo cards. I mean, look at this. Gary Carter is all you care about right here. And instead, you got to look at Mark Hill and Leon Roberts and Danny Meyer. And all these guys are just on a hill somewhere. And there's Gary Carter. Just gets a quarter, you know. Just come on, man. Ernie Banks. This is... Definitely off-centered is all hell. I think there's a crease on this one, too. Gaylord Perry looking like a vampire, perhaps uh, Boris Karloff or something. I don't know. 1969 tops. There's the 1976 Gary Carter we were talking about. And if you're a Gary Carter collector, I understand for purity's sake that you're going to want the 76, right? Like, it's not great shape, this one specifically. But you're going to want the 76. But which card has more eye appeal if you're a Gary Carter fan? I like this one. He doesn't really know what to do with the bat. He's just like, what am I going to do with this? But look at it. That's an attractive card. I mean, 1976 is one of my favorite tops sets from back in the day. I think it's a very good looking set. We got Joe Morgan. More 1967. That's 2B. And then we got Frank Robinson Outfield from the Orioles. Willie Stargell Outfield. I mean, what's the difference here, folks? What is the difference? Am I missing something? I mean, there might be some, like, technology about these cards that I just don't know. Uh, they look the same to me. Willie Stargell's name looks only slightly longer than Frank Robinson's. I'm going to have to check it out and see if there's any difference at all or whatever this is about. But, guys, we've uncovered some crazy shit. It's Willie Stargell outfield versus Frank Robinson outfield. Steers the car over to the Ricky Henderson game-worn jersey throwback threads patch. Not a bad-looking card. Still on the Yankees at this time. This is a Ozzie Smith call to the hall bat card. Authentic game-used bat. Pretty good-looking card. Not numbered or anything. Dave Winfield and Kirby Puckett heroes of baseball patch card. Pretty decent-looking patches, and the unfortunate thing about this card is that there's another version of it, and guess who the... Th well, there's a version of it with three players, and guess who the third player is? Michael Jordan! Why did I get this one? Where, why, where, 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 where? Where's Michael Jordan? Here's a Ken Griffey Jr. patch card. It's unfortunate because this is when he was on the Reds, and then they give him the old throwback, but nonetheless, this is an authentic... Ken Griffey Jr. patch. So, kind of a bittersweet one for some people, I'm sure. They want them on the Reds. They want the patch from the Mariners. Instead, they just get the fake-ass rookie card. There's Gordie Howe, 1979. Pretty sure this is Topps and not OPG, right? Topps chewing gum. And this is the year of Wayne Gretzky's rookie. But, unfortunately, this is just Gordie Howe, which is still pretty cool. But I gotta tell you, he looks like he's 75 in this picture. He looks like he's literally Donald Trump playing hockey so yeah uh gordy howe still a decent card and I, I like how this sticker with the price tag has the hockey thing on it steer us over to the hall of fame call to the hall what is it the cooperstown calling hall of fame out of 50 nolan ryan card there's a rookie review lebron james not uh not a graded one from the fly by night grading companies here not graded that's okay though 1981 Tops, Nolan Ryan. Looks like 1981 Fleer. Or 1982. Yeah, 1982 Fleer. Right, right, because Cal Ripken. There's some more of those 1999 Tribute patch cards. Refractors, not bad. These are good-looking cards. That's going to be a 1979 Nolan Ryan here. And this is Tops 
Don't think I have the OPG one. Nonetheless, a good looking card. Any of these 70s cards are pretty good looking for the most part. There's a Pedro Martinez Nolan Ryan patch card. A Steve Carlton out of 75 legendary lineage. More Nolan Ryan patch action from the sweet spot. It's always nice to hit the sweet spot. There's another legendary game jerseys. Bunch of these Nolan Ryan patch cards. Uh, Sweet Spot Classic out of 1973. Famous firsts. If you guys haven't checked out our eBay store, you can check it out in the link down below. It's VegasFine777.com. You can give us a follow over there as well. We do post pretty much every other day. All right, let's see what we got from this collection that we've already processed. There are the three main cards from the 84-85 hockey set. That's the Steve Iserman rookie, and the Wayne Gretzky and the Wayne Gretzky All-Star. This is a really sick Nolan Ryan patch card, the Sweet Spot Classic with the little Houston Astros star. And it's a little bit bittersweet these days. I'm going to have to write bitter up at the top here because Nolan Ryan is a Hall of Famer. He's one of the more famous and desired pitchers as far as cards go. Uh, he's awesome. But then the Astros are just kind of like, yeah, well, what are you going to do? Hall of Fame, Nolan Ryan patch card, numbered to 36, triple threads, refractor style, beautiful 1969 World Series Mets historical commemorative patch card. So this was a pretty cool one to pick up. The old premier autographs. Not a bad looking card. Sweet spot. Again, we, we always hit the sweet spot. You know what I mean? This is a signature card. It's numbered to 445, and it's a Nolan Ryan bat barrel. If you guys see anything that you like here, anything that you're interested in, all the stuff that I'm showing you now will be in my eBay store in the next day or two uh, with everything else that you haven't seen over here trickling in there after that. Rod Carew, 1967 American League Rookie Stars. We've got a decent looking copy. Corners are soft for sure, but it doesn't look like there's any creasing or anything. Overall, a pretty good looking card. Rod Carew is a dude who definitely doesn't get as much credit as he should. Johnny Bench, 1968 rookie stars. Definitely off center. Uh, again, we were talking about the kind of the cornering earlier on these. This is not that bad. A little bit of roughage on the corners, but overall they hold their shape. And the only thing that, that detracts on this card is that there's a very faint creasing in the card like you can't see it on the back and you can barely see it on the front unless you get really close to it which i don't think is going to work uh, because i have this set to not auto focus but maybe if i get the light yeah you guys can see it right under where it says red so there's just a very faint uh notice of, of a crease right there Next up, the Mick. That's right, we've got Mickey Mantle. Now, this one was unfortunate because there's a crease right down the middle of it. There's a crease right here, a crease right here. I mean, I don't know if Mickey Mantle went out dancing at Club 54 or Studio 8 or where, whatever the hell that place is called. But this is a nice 1966 Tops Mickey Mantle that'll probably still sell between $50 and $70 even with all of these creases. I mean, you could just write low grade and magic marker on it and somebody would still buy it because it's Mickey effing Mantle. Cal Ripken Jr. rookie card. I was kind of excited about this one because it's sharp, it's crisp, and the issue is that the centering is a little bit off here. So I, I don't think that this would hit a 10 in the, with the centering the way that it is, top to bottom, but I do believe that it's crisp enough to be a nine. Eddie Murray rookie card. Back in the day, I ended up trading for one of these Eddie Murray rookie cards. And as soon as I got it, I went down to the local shop called Cards and Comics. And I'm not really sure why I did this, but I ended up trading it to the guy, the owner of the shop. The owner of the shop was a real greased back, slick scumbag, using his dad's cash, just didn't care about the hobby or anything about it, was just in it because it was popular at the time to make a buck. He just wanted to make a buck and bounce. That's what he should have called it. It was called Cards and Comics. You should have called it Buck and Bounce. Probably would have had a bunch of prostitutes around there, though, hanging out. Uh, I traded him this for a bunch of his grab bags, and then I got roasted when I opened up all the grab bags, and they were all trash. And then I wanted my Eddie Murray rookie card back and probably cried myself to sleep for two days 
while I was looking at my Ninja Turtles cards instead. So let that be a lesson to you guys. If you're out there and you're looking at eBay and you see all these repacks, I mean, it's pathetic to see all of these people making repacks that people are getting roasted. I mean, all you're really doing is buying low-end cards that they're overvaluing so that they can sell one high-end card for the maximum amount. Like, when you buy that stuff, yeah, it might feel fun, feel gambly or whatever, but in most cases, you're the sucker. You're the mark. You're the guy getting roasted. So I'm not saying that 100% of them suck. Maybe there's somebody out there giving way more value than they should. At the end of the day, you're generally getting roasted. I mean, I've even seen a couple of people with just like a Jason Tatum repack, chase pack. You know, I go look for like a Jason Tatum optic rookie, right? And it's just like, repack, Jason Tatum, $12. What are you doing? Why are you repacking an optic Jason Tatum rookie worth like $45? Like, what are you doing, man? Fix your life. It's going to bring us to a pretty sweet Nolan Ryan 1991 Record Breaker Desert Shield card. Now, these are relatively expensive and kind of rare. Operation Desert Shield. 1968 Rookie Stars, Nolan Ryan and Jerry Kuzman. This was kind of the best card in the lot, in the collection. And I got to tell you guys, other than the centering... It's not bad. I mean, obviously the centering is is way off, especially on the back. But the corners do retain their sharp shape, even though there's there's wear. I mean, there's you know it's not going to be perfect. You're not going to find cards from 1968 that are that sharp that frequently. But most of these Nolan Ryan's that you see have quite rounded, worn, fuzzy corners, and these do retain the squareness, which is very nice. I would assume that this is somewhere around a four, maybe a five uh, on a lucky day at PSA. You know, it, I mean, the, the surface is absolutely immaculate. There's like no funk. There's no craziness. Uh, if the centering was better, this would be a real gem. As it stands, it's just a beautiful card. Happy to have picked it up. And this will be in my eBay store as well. It's going to bring us to 1969 Nolan Ryan. Great looking card. Iconic for sure. His first solo card. Uh, the, the centering is a bit off on this, and the corners are a little bit rounded, but nonetheless, there's no creasing, the surface is clean, and this is another beautiful card, guys, and it's probably going to go between 150 and 180 bucks. This one, however, is a little bit worse off. This is a 1971 Topps Nolan Ryan, and there's a crease right there, and the centering is, well, the centering is actually not bad. I mean, top to bottom, it's a little bit off, but the corners are, are definitely funky on this one, and there's a crease. So I would expect to get you know low-grade value on this, which will probably still be in the $40 or $50 range on a good day. This 1971 Topps Nolan Ryan is not bad. This is a notoriously difficult set to get centered and grade. You know, there's not a lot of whitening, not a lot of wear, just a, a little bit on the corners, which you always expect with this year. And it's super off center. You can't have your cake and eat it too with these cards. Either the centering is going to be really off or the corners are going to be really off and the edging is going to be really destroyed. You got to give it up somewhere. Otherwise, you're going to have a really high grade card and those are rare and it's going to be infinite in value. This one will probably sell for 70 or 80 bucks in the condition that it's in. 1972 Tops Nolan Ryan. Pretty cool how the Angels had that little halo over the hat. Kind of sticks out. Kind of looks like somebody dropped a SpaghettiO up in there, but nonetheless, pretty decent looking card. Nolan's just kind of like, mm, he's got that Clint Eastwood face going on. Now this is an attractive card, guys. Here's a 1973 Tops Nolan Ryan. Centering is pretty good on this, other than the top to bottom. And the corners are a little bit soft, but nonetheless, that is to be expected. This is a very attractive card. I just really like 73, the way that they've got the colorful name with the little dude over here to the right showing that, hey, he might be a pitcher, might be an outfielder, whatever it is. And then the black border on the white. The 19, I think it's 78 or 79 tops of basketball also looks like this where they have just the black border with the white but i really like a thick black border around the edge there it just it really makes the colors and the picture pop so this is a very attractive set and this is a very attractive card brings us to 1974 tops nolan ryan not much to say about this one really a little bit off center uh pretty attractive set for the most part again cool little flag wave thing not as good looking as this one in my opinion i think this the just the overall design on this one's better but not bad looking 
75 tops was pretty unique it had a full color border for all of the cards even the highlight cards and it's definitely one of my favorite sets from the 70s as well simply because the colors pop the pictures look good here's a 1976 tops nolan ryan another colorful set nothing special there there's the 1977 this one's kind of plain and boring compared to the other ones we've seen so one of my least favorite sets from the 70s just kind of unimaginative brings us right into 1978 which is not bad because of the cursive colorful uh, sort of team name that they have and the green border there is a opg and a regular tops and it's cool that they have different numbers on them and yeah the back looks a little bit weird you can see that this one the opg has got sort of a brighter feel to the color the color is brighter uh, the picture is a little bit clearer could just be the one that i have i have one of these at psa in tops right now just waiting for me or i'm waiting for it rather another one of the 1979s it's gonna bring us into some other weird nolan ryan cards we've got some baseball's finest all-stars and baseball's finest promo card out of 5000 i gotta tell you guys this is probably the worst picture i've ever seen in my entire life of nolan ryan on the back of this card i don't know if you guys can check this out but he literally looks like the old dude from poltergeist 2 his face is just legendary it's iconic but then you look at this he looks like his waitress just asked him if he wanted mashed potatoes with his bacon or he needs a new adult diaper here's a 1984 tops nolan ryan and the only reason why i'm including this one here is because it's a tiffany Yes, the Tiffany cards are more valuable. It was a higher end set. There's less of them. And for all of these overproduced 80s cards, when people are looking for exclusivity, the Tiffany cards are worth quite a bit more. 1987 Tops Tiffany. Another nice looking card. Nothing special though. It's going to bring us to the 1991 Tops Tiffany Nolan Ryan and a 1991 Record Breaker Tops Tiffany Nolan Ryan. It's like 1989 Bowman Tiffany Nolan Ryan. Don Mattingly, 1984 tops. A little bit off center, but nonetheless. And I'm just going to go a little bit faster here, guys, because I, I don't want the video to drag on. And we've been going for, for quite a while now. There's uh, Hank Aaron, 1969. Roberto Clemente, OPC, 73. Roberto Clemente, top 73. Bob Clemente, outfield. Now we've got the dot, and it's outfield. It's crazy. Unfortunately, this card does have a crease. 1967 tops. 1969, Bob Clemente. The Elite Series, Andre Dawson, 1991, numbered to 10,000. And even though this is numbered to 10,000, these are pretty rare, and they go for about 40 or 50 bucks. There's some sort of a 70s, like, hologram, not hologram, but, you know, like the sports flick-looking cards, and in good shape, and reasonable condition this is 1968 1969 mlb promo corp i mean these are still good it looks like a 1970 card though because it has stats up to 1969 these these go for a good bit this is probably 35 40 bucks in this condition it's almost worth grading honestly just to mix things up there's a michael jordan behind the glass upper deck card i believe this is one that you had to send away for do some sort of a special thang or whatever. And this sells for around $20 to $25. Hank Aaron, 1967 tops. Willie Mays, outfield, 1967. Hey, wait. Ooh, Hank Aaron is in the outfield as well, but he's yellow. Does that mean he's scared? I don't get it. What are you guys doing? Make some sense. I'm gonna have to double check and make sure that there's not like some weird variation of these cards, because I'm not an expert. On these uh, on these years Steve Carlton pitcher nice looking Steve Carlton there's another Ernie Banks this one's a little bit more attractive Bob Euchre with a face that only a goblin could love there's a nice looking Andre Dawson all-star rookie 1968 tops Willie Mays 1968 tops Pete Rose all kind of creased up and funky but nonetheless still a 68 Rose Michael Jordan SP1 baseball rookie card a two-pack of Deion Sanders 1989 score rookie and I know that these score cards are plain with just the face with a blank background but these are colorful and they're iconic and I have a Barry Sanders just waiting at PSA to come home to daddy there's a 1962 tops Bob Gibson 
And even though this one's in rough shape, this will still probably get about 100 bucks. And did you guys know that Bob Gibson played basketball with the Harlem Globetrotters? Now that is fantastic. These are pretty cool right here. These are 1970 Tops Nolan Ryan cards. The Mets, we're number one, and Ryan saves the day. Now this one here is not really worth grading, even though it is decent. The corners are a little bit too soft and there's a little bit too much wear. This one would be worth grading, but there's a very small crease. Again, it's just like the crease on that Johnny Bench rookie card. It's just a very slight crease that you can barely see up on the left side of the card, because otherwise, this card is quite sharp. Willie Mays, Willie McCovey, Fence Busters. What are they, the Feds? 67 home run leaders with Hank Aaron, Willie McCovey on the same card. It's a nice looking card. 1967 home run leaders, or 66 rather, on the 67 card. That's Willie Mays and Hank Aaron on the same card, so that one's pretty nice. There's a Sandy Koufax, Bob Gibson, 1963 ERA leaders card. I always thought these were kind of weird looking cards with just a bunch of floating heads. Just kind of reminds me of like some 80s new wave, like almost 80s new wave album cover. Hank Aaron, Bob Clemente, 1966 RBI leaders, and a Tiffany, 1987 BCCG, Nolan Ryan in a 10. Hope you guys have enjoyed this stroll down memory lane with me. If you like any of these cars and you're interested, you can check out my eBay store. They'll be up there either today or in the next couple of days. Please hit the like button and consider subscribing if you like this kind of content and you'd like to see more of it. We put out videos a few times a week and we'd love to have you join us. I hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving with family the best way that you can with the current circumstances of the world. And I'll catch you on the flip side.